I hope you're having an amazing day. My name is Colin and in this video we're going to have a look at tribland.io, a very, very impressive looking website. So let's complete a full research report in where we look at the team, the white paper, the project, and if this is a good project to invest in, according to my opinion. Nothing in this video is financial advice, it is for entertainment purposes only. We are on the website, it looks like they are uh, in a dinosaur kind of environment. Kind of looks like Jurassic Park. Before you go forward, you must travel back. Where to a land? I couldn't even read it, it went that fast. Imagine yourself running side to side with gigantic creatures from ages of... Uh, okay, and then what? All right, so it's like a trailer. I put the sound off just so I can uh, focus on the recording, but this looks really really great in terms of the website it's fast as well lost in the vast land for gun time where magic still it, it moves a little too fast for me to be able to read it but it looks good create your own unique character train your own beast build your own lands grasp your own spells okay metaverse feature okay can we can i move the mouse as well no that's it okay then these are, I assume, the starting characters. Then we have Explore and Conquer the Riches of Asian Metaverse Now. A land of your own that you can hold. Okay. Okay. The place of Neanderthal with endless mountain ranges, months long of black nights and bone chilling cold. Neanderthals were tall, strong and healthy. They could even defeat polar bears, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Some story background. Okay. So they levels through, got some sapient action going on. Then you got some, some dunes. So it basically it evolves. Quite some story action there. Raise your beast, defend your home the all the territories and then it's like the man i really love how they done this website it's really unique it shows good potential but i'm looking for okay dragons are among the most popular all right that's cool mythical creatures they're ancient creatures so dragons that's what we got do we got some buttons here oh yeah okay so we got dragons Cent centosaurus mosasaurus pantera Petrosauria and Draco. Okay, this one is cool. Centro Centrosaurus. Herbivore. Battle the nearby territories to earn hefty rewards. Build your own clans. All right, that's the gamification guild guild gamification feature. There's an auction house. Then you got the the bids on how you could trade the actual tribe land assets on the building auction house, which usually most of these projects have, right? The land of tribe land is full of resources waiting to be mined, which you then can trade. Welcome to tribe land, a one of a kind metaverse. Um, all right, so we got Dandy with LinkedIn, April, Jewel, let's open them up one by one. And the game director, I don't need to see everybody on the team, but oh, here, the light paper is here, explore the documents. That is what I would like to see. Oh, well, that also looks really good. So we got Dandy, Singapore, only six connections. That's a little strange for a CEO, but I assume they made new profiles. As you can see, they all have very little to no connections, but they all are connected to Tribeland, which is good. So there's all from Singapore. And then the Tribeland team has been operational for about eight months, nine employees. That's good. Everything, it looks legit, right? I'm not going to go into full detail about these people and their lives. I just want to see that they are being transparent about who they are um, and not hiding, right? Because if they're hiding, it's usually quite a red flag. Something must be wrong in that case. But this is the light paper. It's not a white paper, it's a light paper. First MMORPG play to earn metaverse on Solana. All right, so a little green flag there. Solana is obviously one of our favorite gaming metaverse project for the blockchain, right? Because the transactions are cheap and it's super fast. Um, Ethereum, not so much, right? So hang on, it says Unity, Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, Apple, Android. I don't know what that means, but if it would 
be released and all these things i would love to know how that works i, I want to know why they're using these logos introduction welcome to the first mmorpg play to end metaverse on solana that will take players back to the land lost in time where humankind and beasts walk the earth together as a prehistoric human being players will have the ability to conquer territories build their own tribes tame gigantic beasts learn mythical spells and most importantly turn resources into digital assets very cool um light paper like this market size all right so they go over gala sandbox they got star atlas there axi so that's all good. The beginning of video games. We don't need to discuss that because we know that, right? We review so many products. We know the potential is there. Uh, the revenue, the revenue of play to earn is rising. X Invent has now become the highest revenue project. We know this. Man, the artwork is great already. Even like we haven't seen anything about the game, obviously, but like it's impressive how they set it up and in a quite unique way. And it's still looking really good. No one can deny the gamify effect where demand for gaming and the play to earn market are now rising due to the pandemic. Triplant is here to build a play to earn metaverse that lasts. Okay, so we, I would love to see a roadmap later. Open world metaverse, open world games, endless exploration options for players. Triplant's starter continent, Pang Pangaea, is that how you pronounce it? Pangaea is filled with dangerous beasts and rare resources, a world full of mysteries and rewards awaiting for brave explorers. Okay, MMO role-playing. Players will enjoy interesting and unique role-playing experience with four tribes in their own quest system. So I think with any MMORPG, if you ever played an MMORPG, uh, it's very much important that there are quests to keep you busy, to basically take you through the storyline as well. So you got like this little sorcerer, this little fudu guy, a big giant, which like probably focused on his strength, and then this lady right in the middle. Cross, oh, hang on, where are we going? It appears it's moving back to the beginning. Oh, what, what is happening? I'm not touching anything and it's scrolling. Why? So although it's a very cool website, <laughs> it might have a mind on its own. Okay, so going back to the actual thing that we're watching, which was this one. Cross-tribe systems allow endless possibilities of characters development and customization. Players will feel as though they live in a primary world, making friends with mysterious creatures and striving to find their own way, thanks to fresh experiences in the character development, training, gathering, and brought by Tribeland. All right, so this sounds really amazing. However, it also sounds like it will take a couple of years to develop. So I'm very curious to see what timeline we're actually working with. Territories feature. Triplant has four continents, each with a limited number of territory that players can own. When a player, so this is the land feature, right? When a player owns a territory, they can construct buildings and unlock additional features in the game. A territory has three levels. The higher the level, the more buildings can be built inside. Maximum 10 buildings per territory. Buildings can be built include blacksmith for forging weapons, a hero training camp to enhance the hero's powers, animal training camp to strengthen the power of the beasts, mineral mine to my minerals makes sense temple to grant buffs for heroes a breeding cage to unlock breeding functions farm to gather foods for the beast a guild house to create and assign quests to other players building types will be updated and expanded as the game progresses all right that looks good heavily DeFi integration heavily DeFi integration or integrated the first phase of Tribeland will feature territory yield, automatic earned yield when you own a territory, in-game decks and marketplace auction house, or in-game decks, all right, that's cool, gamified staking and DeFi hub. Tokenomics, the most important part, here we go. So now we've discussed the game, let's discuss the money. To create a fully functioned metaverse, combine a unique gaming experience with the revolutionary me mechanism of the blockchain to transfer ownership, yep, 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 okay. What are the tokenomics? Here we go. We have ecosystem and gaming incentives, 38% of a total of 380 million tokens, initial release, 10 million, distribution to community through in-game activities, NFT mining, and lock for 1% of total supply every month for TGE for 38 months. So there's quite some longevity there. Team and consultants, 20%. So I would say team, perhaps like 17, consultants, maybe 3% locked for one year after tge and then released monthly within two years so there's a one year cliff 24 month fasting that's fine uh 20 let me just look at the other ones 
liquidity 6%, that's quite low. Uh, unlock 50%, then 10% monthly. Marketing 6%, unlock 10%, then 30% monthly. IDO 30% of tokens, 100% unlocked. Okay, so this doesn't look good. There's no seed rounds, there's no private sale. Everything goes into the public sale with 100% TGE unlocked uh, with an initial market cap. Well, if you calculate the unlocked tokens, this one is already 300 million. What's the initial listing price then? So because they say between one and three million. Let's say you would launch with three million. You can't sustain that uh, selling. Pr uh, there will be a lot of high buying pressure because that selling will be ginormous. The dump will be inevitable, right? So I don't know why one would choose to do 100% unlock TGE to wreck your own project. That's a very strange decision. There's no seed rounds. There's no private sales to, to create like longevity, to, to add to the liquidity, to cut the supply. Um, yeah, a lot of questions I have about this one. Let's see. Yeah, so basically normally what you see is there's a lot of blank space and then it goes up as you progress. They basically release on TGE almost 40% of the fully diluted supply, which to me is not something I often see. So I'm very skeptical about that. Tokenomics. All right, Tripline's token and economy system is particularly designed to support long-term scalability as well as short-term player benefits. I don't really get that. It looks very much short-term focused. And look, it's scrolling again. Don't scroll. Go back. Tripline's to economy has been thoroughly researched and will further improve as the project progresses. Tripline's economy consists of a broad range of activities aiming to simulate a real economy. Okay, so that's more about the insight uh, economy. Google uh, economic activities in the game are based on three main factors, territory development, character development and DeFi activities. There are four types of assets that will contribute to the in-game economy of Triplant. Monetary assets, fungible SPL tokens. These monetary assets include shell, inflationary and tribe deflationary tokens. Territories in terms of NFTs. In-game resources, fungible SPL tokens, and in-game items and campaigns such as beach building, blueprints, armor, weapons, they're all NFTs. All right, quite an ambitious project. I'm looking forward to see the roadmap. Yeah, okay, so here we have the different settings as I just read them. Okay, so you got the monetary assets, which are the governance token, which is tribe, tribe land, right? Deflationary with a maximum supply cap and then shell with inflationary as per all the games follow the same system territory most important piece in tribe like metaverse territories owners will have a lot of benefits including in-game activities and DeFi activities what are these activities i would like to know because i think that if this is such an important part of your project we should be able to know what that actually is in-game resources fungible spl tokens used as material to craft and forges in-game items six different types of resources with different rarities in-game items and companions weapons armor beasts and nfts tools for character development when creating the world of tribeland we try to feature an economic system that is adapted and is tied to the activities in the game i think tied to the activities in the game would be great if that can occur consistently you you create the economy that will live on its own and that's i think what every game desires there are three main type of activities in the game, territory development, character development, and DeFi activities, each of which will bring a different type of reward. So you got the to to economy, then the three different types. So you got, you got lending, governments, staking, liquidity providing, which they all yield in the tribe token, which is a deflationary token, which is basically the one you would be uh, investing in if you choose to invest into this product through the IDO. Then you got your character development. Beast training gives beasts. Fighting and conquering gives you the inflationary token, which is the in-game token, and then exploring items, inflationary token, resources, right? Then you got territory development. Mining, harvesting, finishing, finishing? What does that mean? <laughs> Breeding gives you resources and building, fortune, crafting from these resources probably gives you items and then shell which is the, again, the in-game token. Okay, that makes sense. Then the difference between these, but I think we do understand how that works. 
use cases of the tribe token all right that's important oh hang on it's going back again why is it always going back like four slides what's happening tribe can be considered a type of digital asset as it shares the same characteristics with other types of valuable digital assets tribe has many use cases which help it retain a certain in inherent value associated with the development of tribe land Triplant tokenomics is designed to preserve decentralization to ensure no single party can have full control of the triplant system. There will be no pre-sale private sale, but instead can only be acquired through the following options. How to acquire it? Public offering. Yes. DEX. Okay. Staking, lending, borrowing, in-game rewards, participation. Okay. Um, I don't understand why you wouldn't do a pre-sale, private sale, seed rounds, strategic rounds, if the argument is no single party should have all tokens, because in that case, you still don't have all tokens. Um, if you do 100% TGE, people can just pick up, let's say that this product dumps, which usually happens, right? People are not in it for the project, they're in it for the investment like me. Um, if I would participate in the IDO on AnyPad, that's which I'm a member for, that's how I know this, which is happening in a couple of days, um, then I would buy the maximum capacity that I'm allowed, probably 500 or more dollars, uh, usually. And then as soon as it's listed, I'm going to dump because it's 100% TG. So I'm going to take all the profit that I can, if there's any, because it will dump quick, I believe, because I've never seen this before. So your argument or their argument on the tribeland economics don't make sense to me. Medium exchange currency. Shell is the main currency used in the game. The primary purpose is to reward in-game activities and support the development of the Triveland ecosystem without affecting the value of Tribe and the business governing the system. That makes sense. Shell is an inflationary currency, meaning there will be no total supply and the DAO can decide to print more when the game launches at the end of 2021. 300 million, okay, so here they're already talking about the launch, which is cool. 300 million shell will be released to the market. As a result, players can exchange tribes at a one-to-one -one exchange rate. New shell will be issued to reward. So, okay, you can exchange the tribe for shell on a one-to-one, -one, which basically means that it would hold the same value. Strange, very strange. In addition to the monetary system, tribe plus metaverse Economy features the following assets territory NFTs is the most significant and valuable asset processing there Okay, so when do we get these NFTs, right? Where can we get them? How do we get them? How much do they cost is something I wonder Resources and components fungible these tokens will represent the resources and materials needed for in-game activities Beast items. Yeah, okay, so we have all read that I'm gonna skip this one real quick then you got some yield earning going on, which is interesting. Monthly territory owners will receive interest directly. This interest will be granted in the form of shell tokens, hereby increasing the inherent value of your territory. But these shell tokens are of infinite supply, so I would say not that useful. Lending. Through the DeFi hub, territory owners can lend, borrow the territory anonymously for a period of time and a price that is set to agreed upon by both parties. Participating in the tribe council and the tribe now, each territory has different voting power, all right? So it's quite an elaborate game, right? Owning valuable territory can increase the voting power of the territory other owner many times, empowering them to have extra advantage over the game in the long term. So you don't want economic control, but you do want people have more voting power inside the game. I see. That's from what I'm reading. There are a total of 50 territories that can be owned in the first era. The number will continue to expand in upcoming major expansions. Okay, so they're actually focusing it like a real MMORPG where there's like every year or every year and a half, there's continuous expansions coming to keep the players engaged and to expand the overall, overall experience of the game, right? Beast items and buildings are special NFTs that help increase value. So it sounds like they have a lot going on on this one. We have five pages left. Resources and components, tokenomics. Yeah, this is all quite clear. The vision. Our roadmap will be divided into several phases. Each phase will have a different goal. Our ultimate goal is to create a fully decentralized metaverse where the player base and community can have complete control over the entire operations of the game. All in all, this roadmap will 
be adapted according to the developing situation. But the general idea, it will take up to four years to make Trial Land one of the most played blockchain games in the space. With a fully functioning ecosystem and heavy DeFi integrated products that help maintain intrinsic value of the game for our in-game assets. All right. The roadmap. Product development and user acquisition. This is 2021-2022. So this is a very much not detailed roadmap. In the first phase of our development, we'll focus on finishing our products, especially the in-game first major expansion will also be available at the end of 2022. This is just a rough sketch. These are some random thoughts written down on, on the paper. It is a light paper and not a white paper, but this is very light in terms of it's very much focused on the game, which I always love, right? It's always great when games focus on what they're good at and what they're supposed to do, that is focused on the game. However, there's not a, enough information to convince me that this is a long-term investment. I will, I'm going to invest anyway, because how they made it, the live paper, how the website looks, it looks like it has potential. But I'm going in it and I'm getting out as soon as possible to take my profit, right? This is not a long-term hold for me from anything I've seen so far because it's just too poor in terms of economic value and utility uh, and information available at this current moment. With an IDO coming up in the next couple of days, we don't know anything about the NFTs, nothing like that. Uh, we have two slides left, so maybe, but I don't think so. Introducing ecosystem growth, the second phase of our development will focus on decentralization of the game. Tribe counts will be selected, voting power, blah, 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 blah. Users will be ranging at least 100,000, 200,000 during this phase. Another major expansion will be out at the end of 2023. Fully decentralized ecosystem is blooming. At this point, the token supply will be fully uh, diluted. Diluted. And the tribe council will be expected fully charged. Okay, and the main developers, which will be working to follow the direction of the community with monthly incentives given to the developers. We are expecting the grammar is a little off for a light paper. I'm not saying I can read the best, but um, this should be fact checked at least. Is the phase where the player base grows rapidly, 500 to 1 million users, right? Very very ambitious. Uh, I don't know how realistic this plan is. Okay, they got the team and then they got some information. Um, light paper in terms of game, um, four out of 10. In terms of investment, two out of 10, very poor. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about NFTs, territories. There's a lot of blah, blah information describing it. But this is basically the type of shit I want to see. How are these things utilized? I want to see graphs. I want to see money metrics. I want to see shit like this. Right, this is the in-game economy, but now translate this to money, right? How much are these NFTs? How much going, are they going to raise? You know, it's great that they have the tokenomics where they're basically saying like, hey, we're going to release 100% TGE, which I think is retarded, right? And then they are going to release in terms of how much is, is one token? It's, it's nowhere mentioned, which I think is ridiculous. What, what is the listing price? Which exchanges are you going to list on? Uh, where can we get the NFTs? What is the timeline for the NFT marketplace? It's all not here. Yes, don't get me wrong, it's a light paper. However, the white paper should be ready before the IDO occurs, if you're looking for serious investors. The initial cap will be between 1 and 3 million. Um, that's, that's a big difference, 1 or 3 million in terms of your initial market cap. Do I see this project going anywhere in based of their ideas? Yes, I, I love the idea. I love how they describe the game and their passion for the game. But they need a serious advisor in terms of the investment opportunity, because without serious investment, this game has no development. This game will take six years, eight years to be developed. And any of their milestones, which they need according to their roadmap, 200,000, uh, half a million users will never be achieved. So as soon as the bear market hits, this project is done, right? Which is not something I would like to see. So as general feedback, if anybody from Tribeline watches this, fix the light paper when you turn it to a, a white paper, because the, it looks good, it looks great, but branding is not everything, right? At the end, we are here to make money as investors, and now you have one investor's opinion. Maybe everybody tells me to shut the fuck up, and my opinion doesn't count for anything, but I think it does, and that's why I make these videos. In general, I think there would be a lot of improvements here. Uh, we can check out the Discord real quick, uh, if that's working. Discord, no. Telegram, no. Twitter, no. 
menu okay uh, social no, these links don't work oh, here we go Twitter they got 44k followers so that's good they've been online since September they are very active right triplet NFT mint drop announcement so they are talking about the mint less than 24 hours until the mint drop why is this not on the website why is this not in the light paper that's so dumb now i have to go here look at the vesting schedule they have like they use substack and they have like more information about the tokenomics and shit. so now i have to read this well we just went over the entire light paper i think this is something that should be in the light paper that's why you make a light paper or a white paper for investors to review and not review all your separate shit as well okay anyway the date of our public ido is december 15 which is next week location ido.tribeland.io that's a funny website four days coming soon okay 200 million will be auctioned using the overflow method during your sale the hard cap of the auction is 2 million usdc all right okay there's been a successful audit which you can, which you can read Okay, first phase, the sale period, you will have 48 hours to commit or withdraw USDC into the IDO program. The price of the will then be adjusted based on the amount of USDC deposited. So I can already tell you this will most likely sell out, right? Because all of these overflows that lately have happened, the last 20 I analyzed all sold out like 14,000%. Right, the price. I'm just saying it's my opinion. I'm not like a wizard or anything, but this is what I've noticed. The price then would stop at one cent. So one cent is the actual uh, max. Look, somebody in my community is saying <laughs> seems to have an auction going on. That's funny. <laughs> to ensure that our action is fair for everyone, we will have a special mechanism to distribute our token to all participants, similar to the method of Binance Launchpad. The distribution will be deducted with the formulas below. Committed USDC. By an individual divided by the total USDC times 200,000 each petitionable final token allocation. The second phase is the grace period and will occur during the last 24 hours of the sale. During this phase, you can withdraw USDC safely. During this period, you cannot deposit anymore. The withdrawal will stop if the total value committed in the pool reaches 2 million. Final phase. The final period is the redeem period, where the token and the remaining USC can be manually claimed by the user within one month. For example, Alice committed 10,000 USDC, while the total committed USDC in the pool is 5 million. At the end, Alice will have a total allocation of 400,000 TBL. With a price of 1 cent, the smart contract will automatically deduct 4,000 USDC from Alice committed by Alice. At the end of the last phase, 400,000 and 600,000 can be claimed. Okay, that makes sense. This model was made to ensure a fair practice, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it makes sense. Also note, our project's fully diluted valuation is only 10 million, a small number compared to other blockchain projects. Um, yes, that's true. Thank you, support. Mint drop will be out in the next, okay. So now uh, we need to find, let's click on the actual stack just to see the other, okay. Auction, tokenomics and upcoming sale, introduction to the tribe NFTs. Okay, so they have so much information here which I would say, why is that not in, look, they have so much cool information. I would love to have seen this in the actual light paper. This is so cool. What happens if we play this? Is it a cool video? Oh, it's just how they actually made it. Okay, so they have for each of their creatures and then they got the NFT information. Okay four assets we know territories we know does it but where can we buy them the blacksmith beasts and what they can do then they have the introduction to all of these nfts okay cool 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 okay tri plan tokenomics overview so now if it's a hundred percent tge based on their own race it makes sense according to the policy that they follow. Um, if I'm going to participate on any pad, I'm obviously going to check the price. If the price is higher than one cent, obviously I'm not going to join there. I will join directly with Tribeland. That would make more sense. 
Our game will be accessible beta in late December and early January 2022, immediately following our open sale, which take place 10th of December to 17th. Yeah, all right. 50,000 on Telegram, 32,000 on Twitter, and many partnerships. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, cool. I'm looking for the NFTs. NFTs, where are you? Okay, more token metrics. False pumping, artificial pump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of text. They like to talk to these guys, which is fine. Um, but for me, it's minting event. So I think we just have to follow the Twitter then where they mentioned the beast minting event, this one. Okay, min drop announcement, location from 11th to 17th, one Solala for a rare beast, 100 Solana for ultra rare beast. 100 Solana, okay. Solana calculator. To USD, a hundred Solana right now, seventeen K for a rare one, one Solana for a normal one, hundred seventy dollars, right? Yeah, for a rare beast, ten thousand total, and an ultra rare beast, a hundred Solana, seventeen K. All right, there are exactly. 10,010 rare beasts that will be available for minting in the first phase. Every Okay, in the first phase, so they're going to do more. Every beast is unique in its own way and will possess different traits, stats. To get them, go to connect your wallet. Okay. And the minting opens in 14 hours as of now. Tomorrow, 3 p.m. UTC. Okay, which is Saturday evening. How can I use these beats? After the game launches, you'll be able to use it, okay? But what are these beats? What do they do? The beats is another essential part. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay, the min drop will take place. Okay, okay. Will there be a bonus for joining the middle? 10 lucky wallets from users and min drop will be given one random in-game territory. Users who mint ultra rare legendary beasts will also be given opportunity to join private territory rounds. Okay, that's a benefit there. Also, half of the revenue for the beast will be used to buy back and burn the token over the course of three months. Sounds cool, I want to mint. Uh, probably not. Maybe I'll buy one beast for one Solana, but most likely I'll skip the NFTs because there's nothing based on rarity or anything like that. Um, and you would have to wait until the game launches and there's so many other opportunities. I believe for this project, I will just do the launch which I will participate in because it doesn't look like a shit project. I just don't think the team, um, especially now reading this like Substack uh, part of the website that they have, I think they could have put in a lot more on their website and especially in the light or white paper. Maybe they will be releasing a real white paper at a later stage, but so far it looks good. The idea looks good. The tokenomics don't make that much sense to me. Am I going to invest? Yes. Am I going to hold it long term? No. Am I going to buy the NFTs? Also no. Unless I change my mind, but that's unlikely. Please let me know what you think about Tribeland in the comments down below. If it has opportunities, if I'm right or if I'm wrong. After all, it's not financial advice. It's just my opinion. Always do your own research. If you are subscribed already, thank you so much. If you're not subscribed, then what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button after hitting that like button, of course, because I do appreciate all those likes you guys give me. Thank you so much for watching. This was another research report and I will see you in the next one.